Welcome to DIY3DTech.com. This is going to be episode two of Dead Time vs. Pit. And one of the things that we're going to do in this episode is we're going to take the thermistor uh, right here, as we talked about in the last episode, and that's connected to this digital multimeter, which is connected to our computer. And you can check this out in a prior video. And this is one of the reasons I got this, because um, I wanted to do, actually do this project with it. Now, what I'm going to do with this thermistor is, as I mentioned before, attach it to the nozzle of the Wanhao. I'll put a picture in the upper corner so you can kind of see, because I'm not going to reorientate the camera. And then i also um, kind of put a picture of this, not kind of, I will, again, up over there so you can see what it looks like. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take this thermistor and attach it directly to the nozzle. Now the question is, how are we going to do that? And what we're going to do is use one of these clips to do it. Now this is a rather large, a larger clip, if you will. And the idea is you can see how much it opens up. So what we'll do is we'll, on the flat side, you know, position the thermistor in here and close it down so it makes contact. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use some heat sink compound to put a little bit on the thermistor to ensure it's making positive thermal contact with the the nozzle. Now the other piece is um, with this is you want to make sure your nozzle is clean. So I've already wire brushed it off, cleaned it off over there and again you can kind of see it in the upper corner so it's, it's relatively clean. Uh, again to make good thermal contact is that's what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and apply you know just uh, apply a little bit of this and connect all this up and then we'll come back and take a look. Okay, so we've got the thermistor connected. I've got the Kodak here recording the face of the, the Wanhao. You see we got the meter over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I am going to set the extruder for uh, 200 degrees C. And uh, I should have this in the upper corner, so you should be able to see this as the temperature does the ramp up. Now you can see the uh, meter over here uh, ramping up too. So one of the things, I've got the computer logging in the background. So I'm going to log the ramp up uh, from room temperature all the way to 200 degrees. So I want to measure the time it ramps up. I also want to measure the signature of it ramping up. So I think I'm collecting data like every second um, uh, from the, the meter. So as you can see, it's ramping up. And there is definitely a temperature difference now. Um, and full disclosure, this is not the first time I've done this because, again, the setup to do this video, I went through and, and checked all this stuff out first, kind of uh, see how it all works. So when I did the video, it would run smoothly. And this is one of the interesting things I found is the temperature between the actual nozzle and the temperature of the thermistor are quite a bit off in the Wanhao. So, you know, as we're, we're at 129, I'm at 140. So this is about 11 degree difference. Now, this sort of explains something because when I run the, the Wanhao, I have to run about 10 degrees higher roughly on my temperature than what I normally should. So this is one of the things, and this is why I highly recommend something like this in, in, in the pieces. I also have an infrared thermometer. I've got the FLIR and all that other stuff. But it's, it's best if you have a thermal coupler you can connect directly to the nozzle uh, to really understand the temperature that you're getting versus the temperature your machine's saying. Because once you have this delta, and what I would do is check this delta and the Kodak camera just died. Um, and I had charged up the batteries before. Um, we'll start it again. So there might be a gap in the, the Kodak thing because it says the battery's full. I don't know why it shut itself off. Um, maybe for time, but again, I'm at 194.8 and I'm at 176 here, so I'm closing in on the 200 mark. 
Now, one of the things that I'm going to do is um, when I hit the 200 mark, I'm going to let this run for at least five minutes, maybe even 10 minutes collecting data. It will be a lot of data, and then I'll analyze it. I'm not going to run through this whole video as, as I do this, so um, I just want to cover out a couple more points uh, once it gets up to temperature. Because one of the things, notice how it's slowing. You know, it had a real fast ramp, but now it's slowing uh, as it reaches 200. The other thing I would suggest, kind of back to the other point before the Kodak camera distracted me, was you you probably want to do this at a couple different positions uh, in temperature settings. So in other words, if you print, for example, 200 for PLA, 230 for ABS, I would run the same test at 200 and then let it cool down, run it again for, for 220 or 230 for the ABS or at the typical bands because your your temperature differential might not be linear so in other words maybe you have 11 degrees at 200 but maybe only 9 degrees at 230 uh, if you see where I'm getting at so it's good to do that so again uh, I, again I think worth note is I have up in the corner here because the Kodak is still running that it the the watt how is reading 196 and I'm still at 178 so um, the other piece is the nozzle I, I think might be worth mentioning too so the nozzle I'm running is not a brass nozzle it's a stainless steel nozzle uh, it's not going to be as temperature friendly as I believe a brass nozzle will be maybe somebody will correct me down below that's a metallurgist or something but my typical experience is brass is going to conduct heat better than stainless steel uh, so this might be a little bit for the, for the change, and it might be interesting to do this on a couple different uh, metal um, hot ends, you know, brass versus stainless steel, etc. And so now I'm at 200, so I'm at 202, so you can kind of see up there, I'm at 202. Uh, now it's dropped back down to 196. Um, but see, I'm still at 178, so if I'm expecting to print, if I'm expecting to melt, PLA at 200, I am going to be off by quite a bit, by what, roughly, what, 21 degrees? Now remember, this is connected directly to the nozzle. I've used, um, you know, um, heat compound on it to make sure I get a good transfer. It's against the flat side of it. Now, the clip will obviously sink away a little bit of the heat, um, act as a heat sink, but I'm thinking because of the connection and everything I have with the thermal compound and that that this is a pretty close temperature so notice I'm at 180 and, and again here I'm roughly about 19 degrees off in temperature so this is important to know uh, and, and so again you know I know roughly I've got to boost my temperature by at least 20 degrees to get where I need to be. So whatever I put in here uh, for a temperature, I need to be a bit higher. And this is probably why I've been getting some of the colder extrusions that I have been. And also if you remember back to when I did the wood filament, I had problems and I'm wondering if this wasn't the problem because I've only known about this lately since I've kind of done this experiment. So again, something I highly uh, recommend. Now the other thing, be careful uh, because the you know hot end's hot, so don't grab it because that clip is hot. Uh, <laughs> so it kind of goes without saying. It's sort of like McDonald's having to put, hey, this coffee's hot on the coffee cup, but eh, I got to mention it anyway. So I'm going to let this go through its cycle, and you can kind of see it's stabilized somewhat within about one degree, because this is where I want to do two things: is look at the time of the the change and the amount of the change. So. I'd like to keep it within a one degree window. I'd actually love it if it could be in less than a one degree window, but even a one degree I think is okay um, for this type of operation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, through the magic of video, cut over to the computer where we'll look at the analyst analysis, I'll spit it out, of the data and some conclusions on talking about dead time. In the next video, what we'll do is we will uh, do the conversion to PID and then we'll repeat this whole experiment. So, over to the computer. Okay, welcome back. So, uh, we took all those measurements and what I did is I brought them into Excel and what I did is I normalized all the data. 
So I took the samplings, and uh, well, I can go to the top and show you, I guess, real quick. So I took the samplings, I took the temperature with the target of 200, with the target of 200, I calculated the delta, I took the measurements from a temperature target of 250 because remember I discussed you know you want to do a couple bands so I chose 250 for my other band because they do uh, PET G and then I have uh, target 250 which is 250 and then the Delta and then what I did um, down here is I created several different graphs and this is what I want to take a look at so one of the things you can you can see here here's the origin and again I've normalized this data so I look for the first data step from its normalized temperature in other words room temperature to the first one degree movement and I use my starting point for both um, both temperature sets until I carried it out both of them for about 10 minutes roughly and I took about, uh, well, in the whole series, well over a thousand samplings, but I whittled this down to about a thousand samplings just to make it a little bit more manageable, especially for this video. And one of the things that you notice is here I have the, the target line for 200, and then I have the target line for 250. And notice the, de the delta between 200 and 250. So as I was mentioning before in the video, that most likely that the bands will not be linear and they are not so for example when the one how believe it reaches 200 it's actually 21 degrees off when it believes it reaches 250 it's actually 34 degrees off and that's that's the space that we see up here versus the space we see here so I can do some calculations and kind of figure out triangulate the difference if you will um, between the two but you know there definitely seems to be a clear calibration issue between the uh, actual reading of the nozzle and the uh, the uh, one house reading now I mean really to get this to get this dead on you know technically I should put the two uh, thermocouplers together and that kind of stuff but I, I really want to know the temperature at the nozzle because if I, as I have mentioned before that's where the plastic really melts and that's where you want your consistency uh, or at least that's what I feel is at the nozzle and so uh, one of the things I'm going to take a look and see if I can adjust the the calibration of the temperature now the other thing before somebody asks below yes I have checked the calibration of this probe and it is accurate so uh, against another source so it is the one how that's actually off so uh, this was a little bit interesting now and but not surprising I thought it was a good 10 degrees off but it, as I'm showing here I'm 20 to 30 degrees off so this probably explains a lot of things but back onto the subject of uh, uh, dead time versus PID so the piece is um, down here what I did is I just extrapolated an at temperature plot for 200 degrees and 250 degrees and you can kind of look at um, the the deltas between the two so I have a low end a minimum of 178 and a high of 181 so about three degrees Delta and here I have 215 versus 217 so about a two degree Delta um, at the higher end now part of it is the, I think the way that the ceramic heater is being driven uh, because you see while I'm a ways off I have a bit less fluctuation in the 250 target I, again I believe this is because the controller is simply driving the ceramic uh, heater harder because it needs to because it's substantially hotter than than the 200 but you can see here this is uh, the 200 is really a good example of uh, what you'll have in um, a dead time type uh, calculation where we, we spike up and because if you notice the average is about 180 so we, we overrun to about 181 and we typically fall down to about 179 we jump up to 181 fall to 179 in certain cases we even fall lower to 178 um, you know here we had two polling cycles at 178 before we drop jumped back up sorry 
uh, to 179 and then climb back up to our average. So this, this pattern basically repeats itself. And again, you can kind of see it in, in the pattern up here versus here. That's what these bumps are. I've just changed the, the, uh, the X domain to make it more prominent here so you can kind of see it. So this, this has been really interesting for me because, again, I didn't expect the bigger deltas. And, but I did get the same uh, stuff from PID. Now, in the past, I have written um, PID style and algorithms for tracking because this is the same type of stuff you would use like in a missile tracking system or any type of tracking system uh, to, to follow along because one of the things, you know, when, you w when something varies off course and you want to bring it back, you don't want to, you know, and using a driving analogy, oversteer the car. And, and basically that's, in dead time, that's what's happening a little bit. Now, should you care? It depends upon the tolerance you want. Is this probably bad, this many degrees? Eh, probably not too bad. I would like to really be within one degree would be my, my goal. So to be kind of, you know, within a degree. And I, I don't know if I'll be able to measure that because I can only measure whole degrees with this meter. I have ordered another meter, but it is not a logging meter to try to um, see how it goes. So we'll, we'll see when that comes in. But anyways, for right now, to end this episode, um, I'm going to save this sheet because in the next episode, what we're going to do is I'm going to cover how to switch the Wanhao and, and, and in short, any Marlin-based printer, basically, to using um, PID instead of dead time. So we're going to do that episode, and then the episode after that, we're going to come back and we're going to do the same samplings of the printer, and then we're going to compare that data set to this new data set and to see if we're better or worse. So we're going to do a heads-up comparison. So... Hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, hey, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. It supports the channel, and it's free. And also don't forget to subscribe. A lot more of this stuff coming up, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.